Max, let's cap the show with All a right. nice college football power poll. We rank the 12 FBS teams in Texas uh, from 12 to 1. Uh, these are pound-for-pound pound rankings, remember. We're not saying that the number one team would definitely beat the number two team. We're saying that this is relative to their own conference. So, grain of salt on that. Let's start, Max, with number 12. The UTEP Miners. They stay number 12 this week, and I don't think I really need to explain this. Well, that's uh, a graphic. They, did, you, did you put up I screwed graphic? up. Hold on. Okay. No, you're um, good. Go ahead. Okay. I don't think I really need to explain <laughs> this, but that was a dreadful performance from UTEP in almost every phase of the game. Not great. It was bad, and, and, and I just— Then Brett Pease was fired for it. Uh, yeah, they fired, their off, they fired their offensive coordinator, which is—I uh, agree, it's part of the problem. Right, it's part of the problem, but it's only part. Like the defense is not doing anything. No. And so it's it's the kind of thing. It's like okay, like I feel like they needed a scapegoat, and I wonder, I wonder if 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 Sean Coogler feels this, the drain is swirling. Like I mean, you start firing OCs uh, the three third games game of the in. Year, I mean, that means you're you're running out of time. They I really mean, are. This is a team that gave up 31 points to Rice, who could only score three against Houston. Right, and Houston's a great defense. Don't yes. get me wrong, but yes. it just shows you how far on the spectrum yeah. there's the divide is. Yeah, it just it it really is, and and so I'm I'm looking at UTEP, and I'm starting to wonder where these wins are going to come from. I know they get New Mexico State this week. And I know New Mexico State's not great, but yeah. <sighs> okay, number eleven, Texas State. They stay at number eleven. Although again, I feel like the arrow is pointed upward. Um, that's a good performance against Appalachian State. I'm buying in on what our buddy Ish has been saying. Ishmael, Ishmael Johnson has been saying this front seven is legit, and you know what? I buy it. This front seven is legit. They, they can, they're can they going to keep them in games. Yeah. The problem is, <clears throat> can they find enough offense from someone? Is right. it Anthony Smith? Yeah. Is it Damian Williams? They right. need someone to step up offensively. Part of it is the offensive line is not very good, yeah. but – they need something to click offensively. If that happens, then all of a sudden, I'm not saying they're going to win the Sun Belt, but they're a middle of the pack Sun Belt team with that defense. Yeah. If their offense is just okay, then they're a middle of the pack, uh, you know, Sun Belt team that maybe could give problems to anyone they see. But for now, I fear that what happened against Appalachian State is going to be the new norm for them, where it's every day, every week, defense plays its guts out, offense just doesn't do enough. So they say at number eleven, Texas State. Number 10, Rice. It's hard to know how to feel about the game against Houston. Because on one hand... You're playing Houston. On one hand, and we'll get to this, we'll get to them a little bit later, spoiler alert, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, Houston is a really good football team. I real like, I think they're... And I don't mean... I don't mean they're a really good football team for an American Athletic Conference team. I mean, they're a really good football team in every way. Like, from a... Like, I don't know if they're ranked right now, but, like, if the new rankings came out, because I don't pay attention to the AP rankings, but it, it, they should be. I mean, they're really good. But, again, it's the same issues that start cropping up for Rice, which is just inconsistent quarterback play. They don't know. They're bouncing between Jackson Tyner and Sam Glazeman. They can't figure out what they want to do offensively. And they're not running the ball enough. They're not running the ball well enough to make it a non-issue if the quarterback play isn't good. Right. The defense overall I thought was fine. Kyle Allen kind of carved him up, but again, what do you expect? Right. So I think a lot of this comes back to their just offensive inconsistency. They're at 10. I, I fear that's as high as they're going to go. Yeah, year. I can't imagine a scenario where they get higher than this. Number nine, the North Texas Mean Green. Well, and is, I'll be honest. It's tough to put them here, isn't it? I'll be honest. I considered bumping them up, but it's really hard to move yep. them up after a loss. That said, man, I, I mean it. I think that was the best game they played in the Seth Luttrell era. They played really well for three quarters. They couldn't finish, and in the end, Iowa just out-talented them. It's not a dig. It's just the truth of the matter. Right. They're a Big Ten team. And so, you know, being at home, but, you know, when Jeffrey— it could not have started off better. They get a, they get a fumble, and then they get a Jeffrey Wilson long touchdown run, yep. and you're thinking, okay, hey— here we North go. Texas, don't yeah. embarrass yourself. That's fine. And then they kind of start hanging around. They get like I know they lost Mason Fine. Yeah, it was kind of a yeah an up and down game, right? They went through stretches that were like, oh, this is really bad, and then all of a sudden they would put together a nice drive, and suddenly it's fourteen ten at the half. Yeah, um, I'm looking for. I haven't seen any sort of update on Mason Fine, um, uh, but I want to see what ends up happening. Uh, I know he got you know he got he did get 
Okay. Uh, this is from Brent. Uh, a spokesman said quarterback may find stuffer to sprain knee in the first half and will return. So he uh, that's right. He did he come back. He ran off under his he own did power. Come back, he did come back late. So it's just yeah. a sprained knee. Hopefully it's nothing serious. They have him back. But, you know, overall, I think North Texas has a lot yeah. to be proud of in this game. And yeah. that this is another, another example of the arrow pointing upward. Mm-hmm. That after, I would say, an, a disappointing loss to SMU, in at, at least the way that they lost, mm-hmm. I would say that this is, uh, like, this is a, a like... There's two types of losses, right? That one's a disappointing loss. This is, I think, an encouraging loss. Yeah, I thought they – I mean, look, you can play a solid half of football on the road against a good Big Ten team. I don't know what you – you know, that's a, that's an arrow up, right? Number eight, Baylor. So – Cling into this spot. They – they you, showed you, some signs of life. Right. That was kind of – your takeaway after watching was – this is not as bad as I thought it's it would be. It's not as bad as I thought. The defense got after it. I think they had five sacks on the game. Yep. Zach Smith is playing like a sophomore. Like, he threw a couple of bad interceptions, but there are also you also see the, the, the high ceiling. When he was able mm-hmm. to get the ball out to their playmakers like Chris Platt, they were able to do it. They were not able to run the ball. I think they, they you know, the offensive line is really, is really not as good as we thought it was going to be, and that's saying something. Um, and the defense just can't hold up. Uh, overall, this was probably, I hate to say, the most encouraging game that Baylor's played this e- this right. year, but it is. The problem is now they play Oklahoma. Right. Number seven, Texas Tech. No, I'm sorry. Number seven, SMU. Don't jump the gun. Spoiler alert. Come on. Number seven, SMU. I don't, like, I, I have a hard time gauging this for SMU because, on one hand, I feel like they hung with them, mm-hmm. and they did it without Cortland Sutton because TCU shut down Cortland Sutton. One catch, no yards. Pretty impressive. Really impressive. Really hard TCU. to do. We'll get to that. Um, but overall, like I felt like SMU kind of held their own. But yep. at the same time, I I kind of can't help but feel like part of the reason they held their own is because they ran a bunch of goofy trick plays that caught TCU off guard. Yeah. But and you got to do that to get past a great defense. Right. Overall, look, Ben Hicks, there were some people calling for Ben Hicks to be pulled out of the game. I do not understand that. I didn't think he was the problem. Um, he was fine, but I don't think he's 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 down the list of problems. The problem is, I just don't yeah. think the defense is that good, and it's probably going to be like that all year long. That they're going right. to have to out they're going to have to outscore their problems. I, I will say they look the defense looks exponentially better than it did last yes. year. but that's it's still not it's probably, starting from a pretty. It's low probably place. still not good yeah. enough to win the American yeah. Athletic Conference, but it's probably good enough to make a bowl and maybe win eight games if they if things break right. So for me, SMU falls a spot to number uh, seven. Number six, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Texas Tech defense made two critical stops down the stretch to win the game. That's the headline. Mm -hmm. Forget everything else. Forget how great Nick Shemenek was. Forget how great Dylan Cantrell was. Forget how great Kiki Cootie was. Forget how great Justin Stockton looked. I thought he—you said it in the Slack chat. Look, that was the thing that stood out to me this game. I, you know— when we did the cover shoot last year with with Kingsbury and Mahomes on it, we asked him who's going to be the guy. Who's going to be the guy? Who's going to be the breakout guy this year? And he said Justin Stockton. That just didn't happen. No. And boy, you talk about a player who looks completely different so far this year. It's Justin Stockton. I mean, he was flying all over the field. Forget all that. Right. The defense through two games looks better. There's a difference here. I want to be. I want to. I want to highlight this very clearly. The defense does not look good, okay? But the defense looks better. The defense looks like the 80th best defense in the country, right? Below average, but not in the bottom 10, okay? It looks like the 80th best defense in the country through two games. You can win with that. You just have to stop them one more time than you score, and when you score that much... We've, That's, what those are we, good odds. What have we been saying for two, three years? Yeah. We've been saying all the de- Texas Tech defense has to be is decidedly not bad. Yeah. And right now, they're not bad. Right. They're not good, Yeah. but they're not bad. Yeah. And that is – this is – like, I know that you are still Mr. Hangback, don't want to jump the gun. Let's just and wait. I want to see what they do against Houston, who has a legit defense and is going to stop them. This is the uh, look. I think it's a fascinating matchup. Houston, Texas Tech is fascinating. Really I am is. super excited about this game. Number five, Texas. I do not understand Texas fans who are disappointed about this result. 
Like I mean, no one likes to lose. Nobody, don't get li- wrong, nobody likes but. to lose. I get that, but I also don't understand how people can think. Like, how can you change? How can you move the goalposts so quickly? That, right. Like all like, you're all you're hoping for when you go to when you enter this game is to not get your doors blown off. Right. And then they go in, they darn near win the game. Yeah. And you're upset. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. I'm so confused. You have to like this is and, and this is I think something that people just have to to realize is that this was never going to be a year they win a national championship. This was never going to be a year they were going to win ten games. Yes. It was never going to be that. But. The arrow is so clearly pointing upward right now. I don't know. There's so many positive things. This that is came such out of that an game. encouraging yeah. game. Yeah. The defense looked great. I tweeted it. If you held on to your Malik Jefferson stock like I did, it's payday. Yeah. He it's, finally lived up to it. Look, man, I. He looked uh, great. Puna Four looked great. The defense looked amazing. Anthony Wheeler. Yes. What a game he had. I mean, you're like, look at these guys. And you're like, hey, wait, there are some like defensive stars here. This might be fun. They looked great. Yeah, Deshaun Elliott played a great game again. The like, offense played with his food, and they missed some opportunities. I totally agree with that. Yeah. But you had and a they tr- lost their best offensive player. But you had you a know? true freshman, who I think overcut overcame an uneven performance at times. Yeah. But who made big plays. Yeah. He made big plays. Yeah. You can you can fix the rest. Yeah. I think this is such an encouraging game for Texas, and I know that in the end you are what your record says you are. And in the end, that means they lost this game. Right. But you know what? I think this is the most encouraging Texas game since maybe, what did I say, 2013 OU? 2013 OU, yeah. 2013 game OU. I think this is the most encouraging game since then. Just, just enjoy it, Texas fans. Jeez. You've been like mired in been mediocrity. Miserable and comp- for years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Something good happens. Just let it happen. Jeez. Number four, Texas A&M. So the first half, I was thinking, boy, how far do I drop him in the power pole? Do I drop him to seven? <laughs> do I drop him to eight? Boy, um, it was bad. It was so bad. It was bad. real bad. It was, it was real so bad. bad. And I told you on Friday when, before I left, I said, man, I'm starting to wonder if there's like a 10% chance that Louisiana Lafayette would beat some. And you know what? They darn near did. But they're not good. They're not. No, they're Louisiana, not Louisiana Lafayette is not good. Yeah. They're not good. And they showed it in the second half because yeah. something clicked with A&M at halftime. Something clicked. I'll tell you. The, Maybe I, Kevin Sullivan went in there and said, you're going to get me fired. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Please don't. Uh, there's been a lot of garbage football from A&M so far, but I'll say the one thing that's come out of it that's really exciting and interesting is the emergence of the young running backs. Yes. My goodness. I mean, especially Bussy. He Kendall has Bussy. Been awesome. And then who is this other kid? I didn't even know who that guy was. Yeah, uh, uh, Wody or – Yeah. I, I can't Yeah, I can't even remember off the top of my head. But they, but all the young guys look good. Like yeah. that's – you know, and, and here's the thing. Kellen Mond didn't look good at – points before he came into this game but if you look at his stat line it was actually pretty good yeah it was a pretty good stat line yeah. like he in the end, a, and in he, the end, he, and he some made nice some really pretty throws he did so there were a lot of positive signs it's a trash team and they beat him by the spread eventually which yeah. was hilarious the way it started mm-hmm. but i don't know i mean it's not good but it's it feels better than it did after last week if they play if they play like seriously, if they play like they did in the first half against UCLA and the second half against uh, Louisiana Lafayette, they're a good football team. Yeah. If they play like they played in any of the other halves, any of the other four halves, right. they're gonna lose every game on their schedule. Like that's not hyperbole. They are such a Jekyll and Hyde team that has such a high upside that for me it's frustrating when they don't reach it. Yeah, that's it. Number three, UTSA. UTSA played a bad team in Southern, and UTSA wiped the floor with them. Yeah. That's what happened. Next team. Yep. Number two, TCU. I really thought about it. I mean, so. You can't ask for much more. You can't ask for much more. Kenny Hill is who he is at this point. He's a guy who is going to win a game for you and lose a game for you. And up until Sam Ellinger Uh led that final drive in regulation against USC, he was our surprise star of the week. He was. He played a perfect football game. Mm -hmm. Like, you look at that line, no major mistakes. Over 300 yards passing, I think four touchdowns through the mm-hmm. air. That's what you want. He's a senior. This is supposed to be his year where he does everything right. He did in that game. Um, the defense, I, I wouldn't worry about the defense. Like I said, if you go back and you – I would like to see how many of those yards yeah. and points were off of, like, legit, like, trick plays. Right. Gadget plays. Right. I I don't I, – I think the defense still, like, the guts of the defense still look good. They flew around. They shut down Cortland Sutton, which yeah. is a very encouraging sign yeah. when you're going to have to face – you're gonna have to face like really good receivers yeah. in the Big Twelve. I think the, I think the last last SMU touchdown came 
uh, when the game was like yeah in the final stages. It was so completely over. Overall, so. uh, overall, a good performance for TCU. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the the kind of dominance that you would hope for, but at the same time, I think there's nothing Boy, necessarily and, to get upset about. You know, the other thing too here is we they we've kind of they've been a kind of a weapon or two short the last couple of years. Now they've got Hill, Turpin, Hicks. Nixon is back healthy, completely underrated addition there mm-hmm. with him being gone last year. Mm-hmm. And then these two freshmen from Waxahachie, Rager Snell, Snell and, and Snell. Rager. They're awesome. Holy Lord. I yeah. mean, look, they're going to make freshman mistakes. We've talked about it before, mm-hmm. but you cannot deny the talent Dude. and the ability. I mean, they they were Dude, awesome. They're ga- yeah, they're game changers. They're game I just, changers. They have a lot of pieces. They, they, really, they do. really do. And if it all falls right, then they're a, getting, a Big I'm 12 contender. They really excited. are. I shouldn't have my hopes up, but I'm getting excited. And number one, the Houston Cougars. Uh, look, they played a bad team in Rice, and they did what they're supposed to do. They did what they were supposed to do. They they essentially shut them out. Yeah. Like Rice kicked a field goal in the fourth quarter. Okay, um, like they shut them out. The defense was really really good. Held yeah. them under two hundred and fifty yards. Yeah. Um, th- they picked off a pass. They forced a couple fumbles. This seems looking great. And yeah. the, the this defensive is, this front is a seven fun one. This continues is to eat. Yeah. And um. Kyle Allen, 31-33, 309 and two touchdowns. Yeah. That's what you want. That was the more locked-in yeah. Kyle Allen that we've come yeah. to expect. We've got uh, w- we got Kooks fans in our mentions already. Like, we're going to kill Tech. Maybe. If they do, awesome. But yeah. I'm excited about this game. I'm excited about this game. Um, I, I, we'll get into all that probably this week. Yeah. But um, if there's one, maybe one not all Sunshine and Daffy Eagles guy, yeah. I want to see him run the ball better. Yeah, for it sure. You you want to honestly just in general. I just want to see him we're run the used ball to seeing the offense with under Herman yeah. do some crazy stuff, right? Really yeah. put up points. They don't look like they've meshed yet. They don't they don't yeah. quite have that fluidity to the offensive game plan, and that's that's fine. It's early, but that's that's literally the only like nitpick I have because overall, right. great game. So everything they've been through, not a huge surprise correct. that things aren't one hundred percent. Our college football power poll for a week after week three is number 12, UTEP, number 11, Texas State, number 10, Rice, number 9, North Texas, number 8, Baylor, number 7, SMU, number 6, Texas Tech, number 5, Texas, number 4, Texas A&M, number 3, UTSA, number 2, TCU, and number 1, the Houston Cougars. 